Okay. Good afternoon, uh, everyone there on Facebook and YouTube that uh, is uh, tuning in. Uh, this is Sunday Sessions on the 28th of June, 2020. And so much for the... Uh, for Hello everyone, through the Sunday session, we're going to explore subjects that's related to uh, tree law, orm, water law, she, woodland tree and garden sanctuaries. These are the things we cover. And we even have a side dish of bardic storytelling and poetry. Well, today we're going to explore creating uh, poetry. In this session, I aim to uh, cover the question, how does anyone commence and express poetry? Because it's something I believe uh, anyone can do. We've got two uh, guest poets, uh, Chandler Nichols and Fergus Hogan, and a beautiful recent painting that was made by Val Robus of uh, Magnum Lady Blog and Sligo Hub. And hopefully Claire's going to be coming along to help me out with this because um, unfortunately uh, Val was called away and she couldn't come on live with us today. But uh, I'll start with why do we need to create poetry? And I'm going to nick a bit, uh, usually I tell a story, but I'm going to nick a bit from my own bathing in the phase breath. And this is my well-worn copy from many meetups of Bards in the Woods. Um, and first, uh, I'd like to quote something from Robert Frost. And he was talking about poetry and coupled poetry with power because he saw poetry as the means of saving power from itself. When power leads man towards arrogance, poetry reminds him of his limitations. When power narrows the areas of man's concern, poetry reminds him of his richness and diversity of his existence. When power corrupts, poetry cleanses, for art establishes the basic human truths, which we must serve as the touchstone of our judgment. And I often think of poetry as a bit like um, a dog listening to a human. I don't know if you ever saw a, a Fraser um, edition uh, years ago where they actually just, I can't remember the dog's name, but they featured a dog. And the whole program was in the dog language, listening to the Fraser brothers. And of course, a dog can only understand one word in 50 or something like that, a few words anyway. But for somehow, that dog picking up a few words can understand what the human is saying. And I think when we listen to poetry, it's something similar to that. We don't need to hear every word, but we do get the message of it. Um, I'd like to quote us, uh, this wasn't poetry at the time, but it's a short monologue that I think speaks to me as poetry. It had quite an impact when I first heard it. Something lives only as long as the last person who remembers it. I always trust memory over history. Memory is like fire, is radiant, while history serves only those who seek to control it. The people who douse the flames of memory in order to put out the fire of truth, beware of those people, for they are dangerous and unwise. Their false history is written into the blood of those who may remember the truth. Now that was a, from a speech by the late Floyd Westerman when he was Albert Holstein uh, in the X-Files. It was the beginning of the X-Files episode, uh, The Blessing Way. And for a third piece, I'd like to um, quote the late Robin Williamson as John Keaton in the Dead Poets Society movie where he said, we don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We write poetry because we're members of the human race and the human race is filled with passion. Poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. And you may contribute a verse. So what would your verse be? So, I'm going to introduce uh, Chandler Nichols and bring her on board here. Uh, there's 
Hello, Chandler. I, I, and I think I've got to unmute you. Uh, no, I think you've unmuted yourself. You yes, can hear now. I can hear you. Right. Well, um, so what uh, inspires you to write poetry? What is the source of uh, your imagination, inspiration that urges you to write it down and express your heart, express your voice? Well, I certainly love to write poetry, though I don't consider myself a poet, but a translator. Uh, everything that inspires me comes from nature, the trees, the wind, the water, every sound I hear. There's a story in every leaf and every raindrop, and I suppose that is what inspires me. And so taking a walk through a wood, I don't really have to think about creating poetry, but the words just come to me where I see something and I but translate what I see. So certainly the forest and all of nature is a truly remarkable muse. Oh, so wonderful. Where is it you're actually um, joining us from? I'm calling in from East Tennessee, United States. In Tennessee? Yes. Oh, great. Okay. That's in Cleveland. Is that right? Yes, not too far from the mountains. Oh, very good. Uh, wonderful. So without further ado, what will your verse be today? I wrote a free verse poem a, a while back, and it is called Wisdom of the Wood. And of course, it's something the trees told to me not too long ago. The student, summoned by his master, bowed to his mentor. Master, what wisdom do you preach? The master bowed. There is yet another who will teach this lesson for me. Go to the forest and riddle to me what the magic of the forest may be. And so for 20 years and a day, the student set out to the wood, seeking what answer he could. Returning to the master, said he, O oh, master, the magic of the forest is the humming of the bees, the drumming of the thunder, and the whisper of the trees. The master spoke, Thy answer is a good one, but incorrect still. Return to the forest and riddle to me what the magic of the forest may be. And so for 20 years and a day, the student set out to the wood, seeking what answer he could. Returning to the master, said he, O oh, master, the magic of the forest is the weaving of the spider's web, for she spindles and spins the dewdrops that weep from the clover head into a masterful art sown. But, O oh, master, it is also the running of the stag through the meadow, through the wood as he bounds, and upon his princely head grow the branches of a tree, a fitting crown. The master spoke, Thy answer is a good one, but incorrect still. Return to the forest and riddle to me what the magic of the forest may be. And so, for twenty years and a day, the student set out to the wood, seeking what answer he could. Returning to the master, said he, O oh, master, the magic of the forest is all the woodland kingdom, and the answer to your riddle is simply wisdom. The master spoke, Thy answer is a good one, but incorrect still. Even a fool may find wisdom anywhere, as long as he seeks an answer. Return to the forest and riddle to me what the magic of the forest may be. And so frustrated for 20 years and a day, the student set out to the woods seeking what answer he could. And one day he returned to the master who bowed in greeting. What answer do you bring to me this meeting? The student bowed his head and smiled, then walked away to return to the wilds. The master grinned, clutching a bundle of mistletoe. And so my student, now you know. Ah, well, that was wonderful, Chandler. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, wow, yes, <laughs> that was uh, excellent. Um, now, uh, here we go. Uh, I'm going to uh, check what's, uh, have a look at the comments. Who's on board? Hello, uh, Kimberly. Um, uh, good afternoon. Uh, Donna Johnson's here, a uh, regular watcher. Thanks very much. Hi, uh, Monica. And, and Dolores uh, Henderson, thanks uh, very much. For, now, do tell me how this is going. This is the first time I've tried this on a mobile. It's actually on an iPad because I was finding the old laptop here a little bit slow. So tell me, is this clear? Uh, is, is this coming through uh, nicely? Chandler was very clear there. Uh, absolutely uh, fabulous. Uh, so, yeah, thanks very much again, uh, Chandler. I love that. Thank you. Beautifully Thank you. done. And um, let's see. Uh, right, just let me know where you're uh, watching from and whether this is all clear. Now, um, I'm going to introduce you to uh, Fergus Hogan. 
Um, there, uh, there's uh, Fergus. And uh, hello, Fergus. Uh, are you, uh, am I, have I muted you? It looks oh, like okay. No, you've unmuted yourself. Great. Very good. Uh, I, I'm going to yeah. give a call out. Claire, are you watching? Can you log on too? Because we've got Claire Roach coming on in a minute. It's almost her time. So anyway, Fergus. Lovely. Uh, with Fergus, uh, I think the first time I really came across Fergus was at the lovely Bloom Festival. And it was really hot and sunny at the beginning of June, I think. And I was hoping to have a clip ready, but I couldn't process it down. Of the wonderful storytelling he did through uh, the uh, Garden of the Dow uh, and by the sort of pond there it was wonderful. Uh, now with Fergus, he's actually going to be uh, introducing to um, a couple uh, of poems, and he sent me a backup just in case we would have had a problem. And uh, if I can get back to that and. I, it was so delightful that for the first poem, I'm going to actually run Fergus with the video that he sent me yesterday. But there's two questions. Fergus, what inspires you to write poetry? What's the background? What, how does your conscience sort of say, I've got to write these words down? Well, John, it's great to be with you again and, and Chandler. Um, I write every single day now. And when I wake up in the morning, I, I keep a journal. I, I write my dreams down uh, and I bird watch. You know, I have a cup of coffee in the morning in the garden and I pay attention to the very first birds that I see. And it's really like Chandler, connected to nature, connected to Mother Earth, connected to the seasons, connected to my dreams from the night before. A lot of the time, the things that I've been hurt about in life, uh, separations, divorces, missing my children, things that I find really difficult to live with end up coming out as a poem. And a lot of the time, poems try to help me, as you were talking about, remember the past. And memory is a really interesting thing because every time I, I remember it, I, I seem to remember it differently. Or when I write poetry, it helps me to remember things that I thought I forgot. Uh, Dermot Healy used to have beautiful poetry about, you know, nothing is ever really forgotten because when we remember it, it's right there back again in our hearts and in our souls and in our minds. So poetry for me is a way of helping me try to live with the, the pain as well as the beauty and the magic and all of the things in the world that I just can't understand. Um, poetry and art and music and and uh, help me see the world and my place in it. Um, uh, in a new way every time. So poetry, writing poetry um, is something I, I found that I have to do. I have to write because I'm always talking to myself. So uh, I also write when I'm walking in the woods and in the fields and into town and, you know, when I'm crossing a bridge on a river, I'm talking to myself. And um, often then I find I have to find a quiet place to sit down and, and jot these things down. Uh, and for me, it's often in the back of an empty church. Uh, everything's changed lately. We can't go into churches or coffee shops, but it's the really quiet spaces that I, I like. Um, nature, uh, which is never quiet. It's full of bird song and the music of animals. And uh, and I also think the fairy folk, the she people and, and magic. So, um, and when I'm out of balance, uh, it's nature poetry that brings me back into a sort of a centre or steadies me. Um, and John, you've you've introduced me to so much of that, and I, I want to yeah. thank you for that. Well, the uh, the important thing now, and as I say, we're going on to the the video of your first uh, poem. Uh, so I'd like you to introduce what will your verse be, or, or your first verse. The first verse is. Uh, is called Wolf Moon, I think. I think we're going to show Wolf Moon first of all. And it's That's the right. Wolf Moon. The Wolf Moon is the one, the first moon of the new year, uh, the White Wolf Moon. And it brings, each moon brings its own energy um, for good and for bad. And um, Wolf Moon is a morning that I went for a walk along a riverbank. And uh, I started off in a kind of a grim feeling, but it, it was really a search for forgiveness or self-forgiveness, redemption and giving apology or prayer back to the world for the things, the wrongs I had done. I love the way you explain that. So here we go with Wolf Moon. 
and hope for the best. Yes, there it comes. Good morning, or good afternoon. Do you get John? Can I say thought to? Come on. A card, you hello. And uh, it's a soft, wet day here in Waterford. And John, thanks for the invitation to join in today with some poems. It's great to be with you again. John, I wanted to read some poems today from my collection, Bitter and Cry. And um, it's a collection of poems that mean an awful lot to me. And I've shared some with you before, John. But today I wanted to read a couple that are specifically around a search for forgiveness. Um, my search for self-forgiveness, redemption, and trying to come back into balance in my life. Um, and it's always in nature and in woodlands that I, I seem to find that centering balance and energy again. Wolf Moon. I wake with the dawn of the first of new year stirred by the white wolf moon. I go to the woods to make love by the lake under the great old oak. I want to feel the touch of a soul who knows my sensuous moods and when I cry out in the dark, it is you who is there. We walk the desire path barefoot together between woods and water. The earth is sodden underfoot, wet heavy with last year's fallen leaves. You say you will catch me if I slip and I want to. I count footprints etched in silt on sandbanks lost in time, always pairs of them together, three-toed, four and five. Two shell ducks stir across the water's edge, lift themselves from the shallows. They slowly fly together parallel till one takes the lead and the other one follows. A red squirrel keeps us company along the lane, back through thoughts and memories. She moves from green leaf laurel bush to bush through thorny holly too. Not one blood berry left this side of Christmas, yet fairies dance all round us in the shadows and the undergrowth of lust, till a tiny wren pops up and sings a startling song, foreshadowing the threshold. So we stop and stand respectfully. You hold me in your arms and the years just fall away. I touch your skin and feel your breath upon my neck. I got it wrong, I say. For all those years, I should have gone home sooner, said sorry softer, forgiven more freely, and now if I could, I'd turn back time itself. I taste a salt water tear on my cheek. You wipe my eye and smile and say, this is what it is, and we kiss. I touch your breast, and you let me. I feel your heartbeat, and forgiven. Ah, that was wonderful. Thanks very much. Uh, and now, a live one from your own little studio, your second poem there, uh, Fergus. Let's see if I... Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Um, you're teaching me so much about technology as well as nature, John. Learning as I go today, um, I tell you. <laughs> uh, John, this one's called Nature Revisited. When I fall from grace, the truth of my being, out of the story I imagined as real for myself, I return to nature. Between woods and water, I sit by the shoreline in silent retreat. I watch the sun rise and I watch the sun fall. I watch all the colours of the sky pass by. I make friends with the elements and weather. I welcome the wind and the rain and the sun. I pray to each one giving thanks for their gifts. Blow these idle thoughts from me wash away my sins, burn new life and love and light deep into my bones. Here, I am renewed in communion with nature. Here, I talk with the mink and the heron who come to visit a while, with the birds in the trees and the stones at the water's edge, and the trees and the water too, bearing witness till the end of the day when the lake swaps the moon for the sun, and the stars up above dance with crayfish below, and I realise in this perfect union, nothing is asked for and nothing is taken. We breathe and live and let go, always together as one. Ah, that's wonderful. 
Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, that's, uh, that's brilliant. Lovely. And two poems, lovely uh, contributions now. Uh, uh, what I'm going to uh, look at, see what uh, you've been saying as I've been missing. Per uh, let's see, we've got Kimberly here. Uh, poetry is personal and intimate. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being here, uh, Kimberly. And uh, Margie, I'm glad you're in. Now, Margie is, uh, I wanted to put something with Margie on. I haven't this time. We're obviously going to do this again because Margie was uh, one of the bards uh, in the woods. And I would have loved to put all the regular bards in the woods people on. It's something we did on Sundays around this time. And uh, we'd have a nature walk uh, and we'd uh, share a picnic and then share our poems. And the videos went on YouTube. So it's a call out here and uh, memories, wonderful memories of people like Margie, who was uh, Bards in the Woods, B. Smith, Tony Cookson, Keith Crinog, Leslie O'Hara, Shona Holm, Tina Rock, and a gentle voice, uh, Jane Gilgan, who'd be around this time of year if it wasn't for lockdown, Mary Fitzsimmons, Edward Durand, who was here at the start, he's now living in Wales. Anne-Marie Delmott, who wrote, uh, who recited Yeats, but then she came out with her own stuff sometimes. Very good. And the wonderful, and a lot of you know him, and I know is Fergus' favourite, uh, Stephen Murphy. Now, of course, we would have loved to have had a bit of him on uh, just now. So uh, another look. Uh, good morning, uh, the people who are here. Uh, I'm going to move on a bit. Uh, let's see who else we've got. We've got Kimberly, who who said the bit, um, uh, Dolores, thank you, saying it's very clear, watching from Caramore, so not that far away, uh, someone thinking I'm tech savvy, it's guesswork at the moment, I tell you, <laughs> it, but it seems to be going okay at the moment. The other downside, uh, and I'll talk about that uh, in a moment, um, is uh, now, uh, one of the things I talk about, about creating um, poetry, is it doesn't necessarily have to be in words. Some people, when they get an inspiration, they can't find the words because you're really tapping into something. You're tapping into a language, a sensory language, they, that I sometimes call the language of the trees, which doesn't have a linear language. There are no sort of symbols coupled together in sentences. And uh, we've somehow got to take those sensory reactions and then manipulate those into the words because we've been taught how to write in a language. But it's quite frustrating because even when the words are down and they sound nice, they haven't really captured that feeling. So some people, they don't bother with the words. They go into other mediums, painting for one, sculpture, uh, and uh, generally in the garden, your actual craft. Now, uh, what I would like to do, if I can get to the, you say, tech savvy, is this painting a couple of days ago that was uh, done by Val Rovers. She's very, very, how can I put it? Uh, I wouldn't say shy. She sort of thinks, she's an amazing photographer and she's very proud of her photography. But when it comes to the painting, um, she kind of thinks, oh, I'm, and two version of this, and she's so reluctant to share it. Margie Dunn, who uh, joins us in the bar of the wood, she's another one. And I'm, I'm sorry I haven't got one of your paintings, Margie. Uh, as I say, do this again, and poetry to one of your uh, paintings. And um, But I think it's a beautiful uh, expression, and it not be back. Now, the unfortunate thing, uh, I was going to do my little bit uh, now. Um, we were hoping for a duet uh, between... Claire down in Dublin, who was going to play a tune, and uh, I've actually written a poem um, uh, when I saw this uh, painting. Uh, last night, I actually um, managed to do a painting, and the hope was that Claire would be playing in Dublin and I would be reciting it along with the tune. But unfortunately, our internet's gone down. I got a message, so it's going to have to be uh done uh, in solo here uh with myself if she happens to club on then i and click on the internet and magically comes back i will put it so sorry val who probably will be listening uh to later because she was kind of looking forward to this a bit with the tune but we might record it later and because it's the last uh thing um 
I think um, the, I'll, I'll bow out with this and to remind you that uh, tomorrow we have after sessions. Please put forward your questions for that. It's a question and answer session that we'll do on Monday evenings now. And next Sunday, uh, the 5th of July, uh, it's going to be uh, the Sunday session is going to be uh, a tree sanctuary gathering and hopefully talking to people who've been inspired to create their tree, maybe garden sanctuary, especially during this lockdown, as a place that is their place of inspiration. It may be where they get the inspiration for their poetry, or it may be for their craft, for their painting. So we're going into that next Sunday. And then one I'm quite excited to do that I haven't done uh, the following Sunday after that is the 12th of July. And I think we will be outside if the weather forecast it looks as if it's actually going to improve. The showers will be away. That's going to be Celtic Dragon and Serpent Folklore. That's on the 12th. So uh, I'll, I'll say my farewells uh, to you. Um, I'll bring up uh, myself. I should do. Oh, no, I see. I, I, this is it. And I'll bring up the entire team here. Uh, where is Chandler? Uh, there we go. Is she there? There, let's, let's get the whole squad up. Again, thank you very much for your poetry and your contributions, Chandler and Fergus. Uh, it was lovely that uh, you were part of this. And now, if I can get it going, I'm going to say my farewell to you with Val's uh, painting. And shame she wasn't the board because uh, she would have given a title to it. But uh, I've called this Enchanting Sunset. When the sun paints the sky as sunset red and warms life cold water into the blushing sea, we remain still, silent from words. No more to be said. It's when dreams roost within the stillness where we long to be. Our dreams feel at home and darkness cannot steal them away. We would not be the stolen child sacrificed to turn an og, because streams of quivering light are already weaving a new day. Sleep well with this warming love that scares away the cold rogue. <laughs>